Teams want to uncover cornerstone players during the NFL draft. They do, however, occasionally choose guys who flame out. Here are 15 examples of such players who utterly flopped. Wide receiver John Ross was drafted ninth overall by the Bengals in 2017. The Bengals gambled on John Ross to be the speedster to take the top of a defense. And when a team chooses a receiver in the top 10, that receiver is expected to be the team's number one danger. That was never the case because he left after four years. Up next, we have wide receiver Kevin White, who was drafted seventh overall by the Bears in 2015. Kevin White was a West Virginia standout. He ended his senior year with 1,400 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns, making him the second receiver off the board in 2015. He would only catch 25 receptions in the NFL, while wide receivers drafted ahead of him like Stephon Diggs, Tyler Lockett, and Devontae Parker had successful careers. Up next, we have quarterback Blake Bortles, drafted third overall by the Jaguars in 2014. The Jacksonville Jaguars selected Blake Bortles third overall in the 2014 draft to be their franchise quarterback. And while there were some high points, such as reaching the 2017 AFC Championship game, things swiftly deteriorated. Bortles would leave after the 2018 season, having played for four different teams in the four years since leaving Jacksonville. Meanwhile, the Jaguars are hopeful that Trevor Lawrence, who was drafted first overall in 2021, can be their franchise quarterback. Up next, we have running back Trent Richardson, who was drafted third overall by the Browns in 2012. Trent Richardson, the Alabama running back, struggled to get back into the line of scrimmage on carries after looking solid as a rookie, let alone delivering on his draft position. He then failed again with the Colts, who acquired him in exchange for a first round pick, a unique double burst. Up next, we have quarterback Jamarcus Russell, who was drafted first overall by the Raiders in 2007. Jamarcus Russell is a perfect illustration of why you shouldn't choose someone based on their pro day. The LSU product could hurl the ball over a building, but that was about it. Weight difficulties and criticism about his work ethic were two major reasons why he was unable to progress, and he never received a second shot in the NFL. Wide receiver in 2003, the Lions drafted Charles Rogers second overall. As if missing out on QB Joey Harrington with a third pick of the previous year wasn't bad enough, Lions fans were rewarded with another bust in Charles Rogers. Due to injuries and drug issues, the former Michigan State great didn't even play a full season in the pros. He retired after those three seasons after finishing his career with only four touchdown catches. Up next, we have quarterback Tim Couch, who was drafted first overall by the Browns in 99. To Tim Crouch's credit, he did assist the Browns to make the playoffs in 2002 and bringing the Browns to a playoffs and almost enough to win a position in the NFL Hall of Fame. Unfortunately for him, though, that one year would be permanently overshadowed by injuries and mediocrity, and he'll go down in history as a massive flop and one of the worst first-round decisions ever. Up next, we have quarterback Achilles Smith, who was drafted third overall by the Bengals in 1999. 1999 was not a good year for quarterback picks. Achilles Smith joined the league a few spots after Couch and had an even less successful career. A signal caller who goes, so high is usually expected to take over as a starter at some point in time. But Smith never really earned it and excited the NFL in 2005 with only five touchdown passes. Up next, we have quarterback Ryan Leaf, drafted second overall by the Chargers in 98. Leaf's name is one of the first that come to mind when the phrase draft busts is used. Combined with this dreadful 14 to 36 touchdown interception ratio, with the fact that Peyton Manning went just before the Leaf, eternally linking the reputations together is not hard to see why. Up next, we have quarterback Heath Schuler, drafted third overall by Washington in 94. When Washington selected the Heisman runner-up Heath Schuler out of Tennessee, it assumed it was getting a future superstar. He turned a lengthy strike into a seven-year contract after having a 4-9 record with 13 touchdown passes and 19 interceptions over two seasons. Schuler did, however, achieve success in Washington in another way. He was elected to the House of Representatives in 2007 and served for six years as the representative for North Carolina's 11th Congressional District. Up next, we have quarterback Andre Ware, drafted 7th overall by the Lions in 1990. Heisman Trophy winners can sometimes continue to shine in the NFL. Sometimes they look like Andre Ware. The quarterback spent three seasons in Detroit and threw for five touchdowns in his career. In comparison, he has a junior at Houston. He threw 44 pitches. And finally, we have offensive tackle Tony Mandriarch, who was drafted second overall by the Packers in 1989. This six foot six, 315 pound monster of a man was described as the best offensive line prospect ever on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That was due to his use of steroids in college. 
Mandriarch's drug and alcohol problems forced him out of the league after he received the largest contract ever paid to a rookie offensive lineman. Well, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.